Good Friday morning, everybody. We made it to the end of another work week, and we got some Seahawks news to go through. Nothing major this time, nothing earth-shattering, nothing too shocking, but we got some roster stuff to go through and add it all up, and there's some compelling stuff here, at least on some level, so... Let's go ahead and just jump right in and pound through it. We have some new practice squad spots filled. We have some announcements about injuries. So let's go ahead and go into it. Um, Cedric Ogbuehi is heading to injured reserve. He's been having bicep issues for about a month, and we had too many offensive linemen on the active roster anyway. Um, I don't think Cedric played any in the preseason, and I don't think he's practiced very much lately, so... It makes a lot of sense, and I expected either him or Jamarco Jones to be um, sh pushed to the side for now. So let's go ahead and go over here and give him the uh, yellow tag, I guess. We'll say yellow means you're on the roster, but you are currently injured. So uh, Cedric Ogbuehi is going to IR, and that means he will be eligible to return week four. Uh, if he's not able to return by then, I believe you have to uh, extend it out a little bit. But the NFL has gotten a little more flexible with their injured reserve rules. They tend to uh, let players come back, go back on it, and then come back off it quickly because they knew that teams would need to use it a lot because of COVID. They didn't want to force a team to carry a player for two weeks when they knew he had COVID. So the good news there is that if Cedric Ogboy, he gets better in a few weeks, which he presumably will, then it'll be easy to just call him right back up. So Ogboy, he moves to the injured reserve for at least three weeks. Uh, one other little clerical note here. Apparently, Shepley has been told that he expects to play center. So we're just going to go ahead and bump him right over here, and we're going to go ahead and clear this little spot out, right? And it looks like we're just going to go with three centers for now because... Well, it's a position of uh, weakness. Let's just go ahead and leave it at that. It's a position where there's a lot of opportunities for somebody to uh, surprise you and take the starting spot because it's not solidly held at all. All right, so beyond that, we got some practice squad news. First, we signed a cornerback, not Gavin Heslop, who I was really expecting us to look to bring back. He is, as far as I know, still out there looking for an opportunity we signed a uh, cornerback, Michael Jackson, and I looked him up a little bit. He played at the University of Miami for, I believe, four years, and the last two years, pretty good. 40-plus uh, tackles each of those two years, uh, six-and-a-half tackles for loss, three-and-a-half sacks, but 2017, he was a real ball hawk, four interceptions, <coughs> and this was... I don't believe he was like the full-time starter this year, so he knew how to make plays on the ball. Uh, the next year, uh, not so much, although he did manage six pass deflections, so still making plays on the ball, still doing some things that are notable. But uh, that's really all that can be said about Michael Jackson in terms of his performance so far. He was drafted by the Cowboys in the fifth round, didn't make the active roster, made the practice squad, then he went to the Lions and I think played in one game for special teams. And then he last year went to the Patriots for a little bit and played in one game and had like one tackle. So there's really nothing there. So in terms of NFL performance, can't really say anything about Michael Jackson so far. What I can say is that the dude is kind of big. Six foot one, 200 pounds. That is a little more in line with the kind of cornerback that you would expect Pete Carroll to go get. So I did a little digging on his measurables because every time we get a cornerback, no matter if it's on the active roster or the practice squad, I want to look and see what kind of cornerback that we're prioritizing here. So according to this website here that lists NFL Combine results, Michael Jackson has a wingspan of over 77 inches. That is much more in line with the typical Pete Carroll corner than guys like uh, John Reed or even Sidney Jones. He's a little slow, not terribly so, though. 4.45 40 time is... It's certainly nothing you're going to win any awards for, but it's also not terrible. But this guy seems like more of a Pete Carroll-type cornerback. Now, 
we have signed and acquired so many non-Pete Carroll-like cornerbacks in the last uh, six to seven months. Or, Well, actually, really, going back to DJ Reed, you could say a full year, that I don't know if it means anything anymore, but it did strike me that this guy is more of the Richard Sherman, Brandon Browner, Byron Maxwell archetype. Now, again, he's a practice squatter. It's unlikely to matter very much, but I took note of it. So we're going to go ahead, knock out Heslop, and put in Michael Jackson. All right. One more practice squad announcement, and this one comes from Ian Rappaport. Mark Vital, coming off a national championship with the Baylor Bears in basketball, is signing to the Seahawks. Now, we... I think we all are somewhat familiar with the history of college basketball players converting to NFL tight end. It's happened surprisingly often, and it became kind of a pipeline almost. So Mark Vital is seeking to become the next tight end who played college basketball. And if you take a look at him, it's somewhat believable. Six foot five, 250 pounds, pretty big. He's not huge for a tight end. This is not Colby Parkinson territory, but he's big. So he's got the size that makes you think about some of the previous uh, college uh, tight end, I'm sorry, college basketball player to NFL tight end. As far as his performance in the NCAA, pretty, pretty good. He was not a big time scorer or anything. He averaged about six to seven points a game throughout his career, but he gave the Baylor Bears, who were good throughout his tenure and actually won the championship last year, good minutes for a good four years, and he was a good rebounder. So this is a interesting one. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is the next Antonio Gates, but I like the idea of spending your flyers on players like this. Mark Vital is somebody who has no hype right now because he, I don't even know if he's played very much football before in his life. Obviously, he didn't really do it in college, but there's high potential there. We've seen it before. Guys like Antonio Gates and Jimmy Graham. They play basketball in college, and then they dominate at the tight end position in the NFL, and people sometimes just don't see it coming. But when you think about it, it does make a good deal of sense. So I'm not going to hype him up too much. Again, we signed him to the practice squad, but it was noted. So Philip Haynes looks like he cleared waivers but did not get picked up yet. And we are going to go ahead and throw Mark Vital onto our practice squad list. All right. So for those of you counting at home, that means we have filled every practice squad slot except for one. We have one left, and I believe that spot will eventually be occupied by Jake Luton. I believe he will be pushed back to the practice squad when we sign Geno Atkins. But I also have been wrong a few times on our practice squad estimations. I thought we were going to get Phil Haynes. We don't seem interested. I'm shocked. Um, he played well in the preseason. I thought we were going to keep Heslop. I thought he played well in the preseason. Doesn't seem like we're that interested. But um, that pretty much updates us as of right now. So the 53 man is, I don't want to say set in stone, but with each day that passes, it becomes more and more solid. Practice squad has one open spot left. And I guess that's really all we got. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Do you think Cedric Ogbuehi might end up missing the whole season just because we don't have room for him? Uh, do you think that either of those practice squad signings we made are going to become relevant at any point in their career? Just let me know what you think down below. I'm going to talk about the Huskies later today. I know some people in my viewership base are waiting for that. Um, hopefully nothing huge happens with the Seahawks in the next few hours and we can do Husky videos as well. But, uh, for now, that's the latest on the Seahawks state of the roster. I, um, uh, I'm, I'm hoping we bring in Atkins to really solidify things in the next few days and I'm out. Go Hawks.